What? What? If you've been shopping for GPUs anytime recently, you've probably noticed that there's kind of a shift. Certain GPUs have gone up in price and others have gone down. So the great question on everyone's mind is, what is going on with GPUs? Welcome back. My name is Seth Estrada. And if you're watching this video, you're probably on my YouTube channel, Seth Estrada. And as you know, I maintain a document for GPU mining efficiency that has all the latest data on popular GPUs for crypto mining. I do this as a community service. My day job, just open disclosure, is actually as a corporate trainer and consultant. Typically a consulting trainer, but occasionally a training consultant. I know that's confusing, but you know, so is corporate America. I don't do this full time unless a client hires me to, but I put together this, all of this data so that the typical person getting into GPU crypto mining can get a sense for what's possible with the current state of GPUs. Now I wanted to call out a couple of things that have changed since the last time I did an update. I've simplified and streamlined the number of tabs on this document. First off, there's only a, a, a raw data tab here, which I pretty much maintain tight control of from this side over all the way to the left. But from this side moving out, this is a community effort. So the big ask for me is contribute contribute your best numbers. If you know that you're getting a really good hash rate on a given card for a given algorithm, please contribute it. Now, as you're aware, Christy, who runs Oh Got A Company or Oh Got A Girl is her handle on GitHub and other places, she has released, well, with their company has released the ETH Largement pill. And I'm probably saying it wrong, but I'm gonna call it the ETH Largement pill, as in ether. So. I've added a little bit of a call out here that all of the 1080s and 1080 Ti's, because they're using GDDR5X and are eligible to use the ETH Largement pill and the, the ETH Largement protocol, their hash rates have been altered. So, and I uh, previously I went a little bit more conservatively with those numbers. I've since been able to read that more people are having greater success pushing the limit of what's possible. So any 1080 Ti's here are being listed as 55 mega hashes per second. Now, if you try to sustain 55 mega hashes per second and you go, I don't know, say melting the, <laughs> melting the air shroud, the airflow shroud off the front of your GPU, don't blame me. These are community numbers. You know the risks when you're mining on commodity hardware. So don't go whining to anybody that you got really great performance, but then burned your house down. Um, on a similar note, please contribute numbers that you know are sustainable for you, if possible, when adding to this list. But I wanted to you know, do a quick call out on this document to call out some changes that I've made recently. So there's dollars per hash, and then there's efficiency per watt. Only those two additional interpretation tabs, that's it. And then the raw data tab, which I've got highlighted, highlighted in green down here. If you have numbers, again, by all means, contribute them, especially with skunk hash on some of the lower end or older AMD cards, and then X16R for the older AMD cards. I'm not sure if it's even possible to do X16R because some of the algorithms in the multi-algo cycle that X16R uses might have difficulty on those older cards without flashing a, an updated BIOS or making some tweaks. I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard back from anybody in comments and I haven't seen any updates on the document just yet. But Zevin, NIST 5, and then Phi 1612, we don't have good data on, as well as the Vega series of cards that we don't have good data on a couple of algorithms. Vega Frontier Edition as well. We have a little bit of difficulty understanding. Uh, we got, we're in a vacuum here, right? Only so many algos we have info on, um, including the X16R. So yeah, I've got the, the Vega Frontier Edition for air, but water, I don't just wanna blindly copy numbers. Though, you know what? I literally just said that and kind of feel like that's brilliant now. So that's literally what I'm doing during the video live. So those are updated, but if you have better numbers, by all means, go ahead and contribute those. They should be a little bit different from card to card. Right now, they've mostly been a blind copy from one to the other, but I imagine we should be able to get slightly better, more aggressive uh, efficiency out of the water cooled edition. I don't know, but please contribute if you have cards of that type. All right, so that's the raw data tab and it's changed in a couple of ways. And I'm gonna get back to this in just a minute. I promised, I, I teased at something different at the beginning of this video. So I'll get back to it in just a moment. But we streamlined it to just two additional tabs for data interpretation, dollar per hash. 
people, I keep hearing from some people, why would you put dollar per hash, Seth? Why does that matter? Well, I'll tell you why it matters, and this video is kind of proof. It matters because there's this concept of capital expenditure, and you've seen the video before, how to figure out where your break-even point is, when you're gonna air quotes ROI, but capital expenditures, when you spend too much upfront on your mining equipment, it takes forever to pay it off, right? So you have to know that uh, that your overall total expense up front isn't too great. And there are some cards that still mine fairly well and will help you find block rewards on smaller pools or increase, uh, increase the likelihood of you unlocking block rewards, right? Mining block rewards if you're doing solo mining of certain algorithms, as long as they're powerful enough, if that makes sense. With mining in general, you want to hit it heavy, you want to hit it with a high hash rate as soon as you can, yes. And some cards will simply cost less per hash to just to get started. And so they scale better, if, if, I, if I can just put it that way. Now, we also have efficiency per watt. You might be saying, hey, Seth, efficiency per, per watt is the only thing that matters. And for long-term mining, I would tend to agree with you. However, efficiency per watt also needs to be balanced between the cost of the card. See, it's a delicate dance, right? We're doing sort of a tango. These two sides of cost per hash and then how many mega hashes per watt where each card yields. So take both into consideration. Uh, yes, in, in the past, I've definitely recommended that people look at certain cards, but for the most part, what I'm gonna tell you to do is do your own research, and this is just data. You can take it so you can make a better decision about what you're gonna do. Again, that's one of the reasons that the community numbers here are so important, that we don't lead each other astray, but we just figure out, okay, who's been getting good numbers on which cards, and now when we look at the interpretation, we can make a much more informed decision. That said, in the past, I've recommended the Vega Frontier Edition. My recommendation is now done. As of today, I no longer recommend the Vega Frontier Edition. But, newsflash, when I told you that was my recommendation, that was limited. That was for Q1 and Q2 of 2018. So, cue the applause. It is June 1st. It's essentially the start of Q3. My recommendation is now over. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, folks. I will always tell you when a recommendation has changed. But the Vega Frontier Edition, though it does hash very high on certain algorithms like Kryptonite, like Kryptonite Heavy, so coins like Monero, coins like uh, BBS coin, for example, or like Duck Note, Truck Note, so many others that use the Kryptonite algorithm. Well, that's not everything. And profitability has swung back in the favor primarily of Dagger Hashimoto. And now there are even further recommendations from some side of the cryptosphere, the, the mining cryptosphere, for new proofs of work. Prog POW is one such example. Um, and that's being shopped around to different corporate interests and uh, being put in front of the Grand Fidalic himself, just to see can Ethereum pivot a little bit before ASICs come in and you know, basically ruin the ride for any of us who are invested in GPUs and for the entire crypto scene in general. That was really long-winded. All I meant to say was, my recommendation has changed and Dagger Hashimoto is back at the top of the stack. We could open up whattomine.com. I'd rather not do that for this video. Let's just look at the raw data here and then look at a couple of case studies. Now, one of the things that has changed between efficiency per watt and dollar per hash, well, is basically everything. That's the top thing that's changed. Everything has changed. Why? Because a central key data point on every single card has just shifted radically. So for example, the R9 280X, it has strangely, it has gone up in price. So have some of the other R9 series cards by AMD. They've actually gone up in price a little bit, but ironically, the 295X2 has gone down even though it's a higher, got the one of the highest Ethereum hash rates of any consumer card ever made, it's actually gone down in price. 
The street price. You'll still find it used. You have to find it on eBay or find a private seller, but the price has actually gone down. The 380, down. 390, down. The R9 Fury actually, ha I want to say it went up a little bit, ironically, probably because of the HBM memory on the R9 Fury. And I don't know if there are any numbers from, say, Kryptonite to validate having it go up so high because the RX 570 is also in that same hash rate category, in that same category of, of Kryptonite V7. So mining Monero, you're no better off using an R9 Fury than you would be on a modern RX 500 series for the 570 or 580. Especially if you've got a really good BIOS mod, you're gonna get about these numbers, maybe even a little bit better than 800, uh, 800 hashes per second on Kryptonite V7. So consider that. But the R9 Fury is still more expensive than those cards by a long shot. Consider that you're gonna be able to get two of the RX 570s or RX 580s for the same price as an R9 Fury. What's going on with the market? I don't know, but there's a kind of a weird curve between cards that have gone up and cards that have gone down. The RX 550, uh, down just a little bit. RX 560, down just a little bit. I've also gone out of my way to change the designation here that I'm talking about the four gigabyte versions there. I will no longer, if possible, will no longer recommend two gigabyte cards on this spreadsheet. They are just no longer relevant for Ethereum because of the DAG file size. So if, uh, if anything, if there's a question there, it's either the four gig model or in the case of the GTX 1060, I will only be listing the six gig model, not the three gig model. Uh, other cards such as the 750Ti, well, they're still listed here because the, somehow they're still relevant. We may swap that out to the 1030 or add the 1030 to the lot lineup, but pricing has changed drastically. Let me especially cue in on the Vega 56 and the Vega 64, previous Kryptonite Kings and current Kryptonite Heavy or Kryptonite V7 Kings. Um, looking at the price, the Vega 56 can now be had for $600. It's very much close to its initial MSRP when it first launched. Let's jump into Amazon just to take a, a live look at, at what the pricing is today. Now I'm looking at this June 1st, 2018. It's Friday night and I'm seeing right here, we can actually find the MSI with Amazon Prime shipping, two day shipping. It would get to where I am in literally two days for 550 out the door. Even less than I have listed in the spreadsheet. Sapphire, 580. These are the 8 gig Vega 56 cards. Now they're not the uh, they're not the blower style either. These are the multi fan style. I'm sorry, the MSI is the blower style reference design. Sapphire is a dual fan design. Uh, but we're seeing the prices is, are, are just far lower than they were the last time I, I did this video. Now the Sapphire over here, this particular model right here. Yeah, Radeon Nitro, $700, but even that, far better than the prices that I saw before. So the average of these prices right here, we're just gonna call that average $600. So that's brought the calculations way down. It's, they're in a whole different category. So just be aware of that. Vega 56 or is uh, $600, and again, with proper tweaks, it's going to perform just about as well, if not possibly even a little bit better than the Vega 64. So on Crypto Night Heavy, $150 average difference in average cost uh, for the price difference. Uh, I don't think I need to tell you, Vega 56 is probably a slightly better buy there. Then the Vega Frontier Edition, really not budging. It's still about $930 when air cooled. So you look at the $330 difference there, and even if you're able to manage to tease out more performance from the Vega Frontier Edition by doing uh, BIOS mods or other overclock undervolting tweaks and uh, algo tuning, you're probably still better off sticking with the Vega 56 for today if you're interested in using a Vega card and mining Monero specifically. That's kind of a specific recommendation and use case now. Vega Frontier Edition, again, I'm gonna say it one more time. I wasn't wrong. I've just changed my mind. In fact, I didn't even change my mind. My prognosis was correct. In Q3, Vega Frontier Edition is just not the card to buy anymore. So, 
You heard it here first. All right, RX 570, RX 580, probably my top recommendation for Team Red right now. RX 570 in particular, eight gig model, you're looking at under 300 bucks per card. Actually a better price than the 400 series RX cards, the Polaris cards, uh, first gen Polaris cards. So there's a bit of a, a bit of a, I don't know. Again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on here. Maybe it's because AMD has forced a greater number of the RX 500 series cards into the market that you're able to get the RX 570 at a better price. But definitely resale value on the RX 570 is going to be better. And performance, no slouch. And uh, certainly... Uh, yeah, performance is good and future proofing because of the amount of RAM on the card. Pretty darn good. And general performance across algorithms, even like X16R, you know, not terrible. Not terrible, I'll say that. Um, not as good as several other cards that are out there. Certainly the Vega series cards, Vega 64. It's, there's no replacement for displacement. When you got more shader cores, when you got faster memory, and when you got more of it, you just get better performance with certain algorithms. And uh, X16R is one of those uh, multi-algo cycles that just really exploits those those strengths. So we're short showcases those strengths. All right, so guys, that's Team Red in a nutshell. Team Green, a little bit less movement. The 750Ti, oddly, hardly any price difference. 1050Ti, hardly any price difference. 1060, down a little bit. 1070, and above, this is where we're starting to see a little bit of price movement, a little bit of price, uh, uh, some up and down, some action. But 1070 is down quite a bit. 1070 hybrid, almost the exact same price. So if you want a partially liquid cooled card and you want something that's going to retain maybe slightly higher resale value to go to gamers after you're done mining, maybe look at the 1070 hybrid. Now we'll look at some of the numbers and interpretation in a minute to see if that uh, if that bears recommending based on efficiency and based on uh, cost per hash or dollar per hash. But I would say just eyeballing it right now, a card that's going to have really quick resale value to a gamer, 1070 hybrid. I, I would say, just looking at it right there, 1070 Ti, 500 bucks. It's down just a little bit. Ti hybrid, 1070 Ti hybrid, actually a little bit more pricey than what I would expect. It should cost again. That's why I would go with the 1070 versus the 1070 Ti in a hybrid. If you're looking at a, a liquid cooled model with its own bundled radiator, pump, and fan, 1080. Obviously, with the GDDR5X, you've got the benefit of enlargement. You've got hash rates of almost 40 mega hashes per second, putting it into the category of almost like a Vega 56, Vega 64, at, at about the same price, too. So you're finally at this place where there's a little bit of price parity between the Vega 56 and the 1080 for good reason, right? It wasn't a very good reason to have a price parity before. It was sort of like, okay, well, if you're mining Equihash, then maybe, maybe it makes sense then. But even then, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that Zcash was at the top of profitability so much that it made more sense to go that route. 1080, definitely worth it with a largement pill. 1080 hybrid ETH large. Similarly, same. Uh, you've got the exact same hash rate, but the pricing actually only about 30 bucks more based on what I saw on Amazon and average pricing today. Now, to be clear, there are only so many, and I'm going to tab on over, only so many models that use the hybrid cooling. Let's look up GTX live shopping right now, GTX 1080 hybrid. And what we're going to find is that there are a limited number of models that actually uh, are offered in a hybrid. So the 1080 Ti is listed down here, Ti, uh, da, 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 and then not many others. 1070 Ti hybrid. We've got the EVGA hybrid here, FTW model. And that's where I got that pricing from was right there. But still, clearly it's down. It's even listed as being on special. So down to 620 is an improvement in pricing, I'll say, for the economy of mining. Obviously, if you were to get 20 cards, then you're looking at the price difference between getting a free 1080 or having 20 uh, 1080 hybrids, right? So the economy of scale is kind of in your favor uh, to go with air-cooled. But again, if you want a way to build in higher resale value, I'm just going to go on record as saying that the hybrid is probably a better way to go 
you're going to be able to assert to uh, any non-miners, like gamers, that no, you didn't beat the crap out of this card. You didn't beat the snot out of this card because it was partially liquid cooled the entire time you worked with it. And that's with little headache on your part. You don't have to do any kind of immersion into mineral oil or engineering fluid or uh, you know the, whatever the 3M Novac. Uh, that's just that's just overkill, right, for GPU mining. So you can protect that investment a little bit better by going with the hybrid. In my opinion, that might be a way to go. 1080 liquid, this is only the hydro copper available from EVGA, far more expensive. And then moving into the 1080 Ti where Enlargement Pill really shows its strength, right? Uh, 55 mega hashes per second. But 1080 Ti has dropped, oh wait, no it hasn't, not by much. It's still 900 bucks. So let's think about that. We, we're, This is where I'm seeing a bit of an issue with GPUs right now. Things are going kind of nuts. So yes, the enlargement pill is phenomenal for Ethereum. And yes, Ethereum is at the top of the profitability uh, profitability counters for now, unless you're mining a portfolio or mining very exotic coins by finding out about uh, really great new blockchain product projects that you can mine early, you know, close to the Genesis block. Um, but that takes a lot of work, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. We're all just trying to mine Ethereum so that we have a little something at the end of the day, you know, past the profitability point. So Ethereum, yes, the 1080 Ti, I can see how there might be a case for that, but we have to go into the numbers to see if it really makes sense. The price is still high on the 1080 Ti, 900 bucks, 1080 Ti hybrid from EVGA, about a thousand, and 1080 Ti liquid cooled, and I kid you not, it's 1500. I think I had that open before. Let's take a look at it now. So I'm gonna go right here, 1080 Ti Hydro, because frankly, the Hydro Copper is the most popular model. Right here, guys, it's right there in black and white. $14.99 on Amazon with four and a half stars. People actually are, are paying for the privilege to get punched in the throat and then giving it four and a half stars. Ugh. Ugh. 1080 Ti Seahawk right here. Uh, well, I mean, and I uh, pardon my ignorance, but this looks an awful lot like a hybrid card to me, not straight ahead liquid cooling. So still 1200 bucks there for hybrid. And I brought, I, mean, I brought the average price for the hybrid down. I really realistically could bring this down to 1100 instead and call that fair based on what I'm seeing in the market today. Now, again, before I get pushback from anybody saying, Seth, these are prices that you're shopping on Amazon. Well, what about what about Bob's GPU cart that I've got right back here in the back alley? Well, you know what? You go ahead and you you buy from Bob's GPU cart. That's fine. Feel free to do that. I think for the purposes of what most people are finding online, outside of uh, the flash sales you can find on Newegg or on Massdrop or somewhere else, Amazon is the baseline for comparison. So that's what I'm doing here. If you want to get multiples and you, or you want to get something shipped immediately, you don't want to have to wait three weeks because you're trying to buy in bulk and then also hold, hold out for a lower price. I'm here to tell you, I've recently done a bit of consulting for some crypto mining operations that are a little bit larger in scale. Scale isn't going to save you all that much. Some of these prices actually are not too far from what larger scale mines are, are paying as well but they're ponying up the cash to get lots of a hundred or a thousand of them or more. So one off, these are about the prices you can expect to pay. And if you want them fast overnight, you know, two day shipping from Amazon Prime, then you're almost gonna pay exactly this price right now. If you can find it lower, by all means do, keep your CapEx as low as possible, but just know that that's, it's pretty tricky pretty darn tricky. So let's jump into dollar per hash. Let's see where the hash rate kings are right now. I'm going to jump back into Kryptonite v7 because, you know, I'm a fan of Monero. I'm a believer in uh, in their mission there. So lowest price per hash is actually still the R9-280X, even with a slight increase in price, but then right behind it, still the Vega 56. And in fact, I think it jumped ahead a couple of spots there ahead of an RX for a 570 and 580, but the RX 570 right behind it again because of the price drop being under 300 bucks. It is a killer value right now. 
not because it's the most efficient mining, uh, Monero mining piece of equipment out there, but because the price is so much better than it was previously. RX 560, four gig right behind it, and Vega 64 in a fifth place. So top five dominated by AMD, and bottom of the entire stack ranking is NVIDIA. Wah, wah. But you know what? Monero isn't everything, and Kryptonite V7 coins aren't everything. Let's look at, well, while we still can, let's look at the Equihash algorithm. While well, we're waiting for that to that saga to play out. All right, top five cards, also AMD. R9280X, still top of the stack. RX 550, four gig, and then a 564 gig. Apparently, are so inexpensive just to get you hashing that they're still in the top three. The R9 295X2, even though it's gone, yeah, it's also gone down in price. I guess that kind of makes sense as to why it would go, go up in the ranking. And then the R9 290. So it looks like, man, of the top five, three of them are going to basically be used cards. You can't even get these new if you wanted to. They couldn't get new if you tried. Um, what I will say is I know some sellers of some R9 280Xs. So if you want to get your hands on, I guess, six of those, make a comment and maybe maybe I'll connect you to the, the seller. Let me know if you really want some R9 280Xs. And moving on the list, so Kryptonite, Equihash, and the Killer Trifecta you've been waiting for. Let's go over to ETHash right here. Sort sheet A to Z. And whoa! Top of the list, still very much dominated by AMD. And still at the top of the list is the R9 280X. Guys, these numbers are fresh. I just revised these numbers. Um, and it hasn't changed much since I first launched this list. The 295X2, not a big surprise because of the ultra high hash rate. 570, R9 290. And then 580, 470, 560, 480, 550. Basically get anything new from AMD and customize that BIOS. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Undervolt the snot out of it and customize that BIOS. Over on efficiency per watt, let's see what the long view is. Let's see what the long-term prospect is for these newer cards. Gonna start with Kryptonite V7 just once again and go with A to Z, sorting A to Z. Shouldn't be a surprise. Vega 56 was already pretty killer but with the price drop, well, no, the price drop isn't even factored into here. What am I talking about? That's not what this calculation does. But uh, there's nothing that's changed at all in terms of performance characteristics or in terms of power consumption. Vega 56 is at the top of the stack, but it also happens to be the least expensive ultra high performer in the top three or the top four for that matter. But in the top five, there's still the RX 560 four gigabyte. Pretty amazing and the GTX 1060, which is unexpected, but because it is such an efficient card, the GTX 1060 consistently uh, consistently maintains uh, top 50% and typically top 30% performance. And in this case, it looks like it's the uh, top 20% as well. So uh, better than top 25%, certainly. And GTX 1060, you just can't speak highly enough of the GTX 1060, the 60, the six gigabyte model. Um, even with various uh, hacks and, and BIOS mods and tricks like the ETH Largement pill, the GTX 1060 is still just a phenomenal performer, right? So Equihash algorithm, let's see who dominates here. What? What? No way. I was not expecting this. RX 560 4 gig. Now, I mean, I know I made some tweaks here, but uh, wow, that is an efficient card. The RX 560 right there at the top of the stacked ranking for Equihash for today. That's killer. And the GTX 1060 right behind it. The RX 550 is in the top half, RX 580 is in the top half, but really they're they're pretty far behind. That top five ranking is dominated by AMD or by NVIDIA. Wow, Freudian slip there. I think maybe I want AMD to win. Maybe. I think it's because they're from Texas. I, I really like AMD. I really do. NVIDIA is an awesome company as well. Don't get me wrong, and I love NVIDIA products. So don't want to show any favoritism there. <laughs> Too late. But the GTX 1060... The 1080 Ti, ETH Larged, interestingly, interestingly, yeah, huh. 
But the 1080 Ti, very efficient performer there on Equihash. 1070 Ti, 1070, which again, my recommendation from before, it's there in the top five, so hmm, maybe that validates that. And then the 1080, which stands to benefit from the Ethelodgeman pill as well. Last but not least, let's go over to Ethereum Mining, sorting the sheet A to Z. Boom! No surprises here, guys. No surprises at all. Two cards with the Ethelodgeman pill, but the GTX 1060 still beats them. Yes. Yes. Suck on that, Ethereum dysfunction. The 1060, it's still at the top of the stack for efficiency per watt. The RX 570 is in the top five, and the 1070 Ti is also in the top five in terms of efficiency. You know, it begs the question, why isn't the 1070 hybrid there? Well, on the data tab, we've got the 1070 and the 1070 hybrid. Right here, power minimum, ah, therein lies the rub. Power maximum on the 1070 is 130. Power minimum, 99. I'm not sure how those got so radically borked because the 1070 hybrid should not be at 210 for max power consumption. Let's go ahead and bring that back down to uh, roughly about where it should be. We can even give it a handicap for having a water pump on it. And let's just say that it's uh, 10, it's 140 peak power consumption. And let's bring lower power consumption all the way down to 99. So it's a little bit more in line with what the 1070 does. And then let's do the same for the 1070 Ti. Let's get it uh, with max power consumption within shot of what uh, that does there. And then lower end power consumption down to 105. So the same for anything that is uh, a hybrid card. So this one is listed at 215. Bring it up to there. Do, do, do. And let's call this one max 170 for the hydro copper. Do the same for the hybrid over here. Alrighty. So we've got some slightly better numbers to work with there. We're going to give a handicap to the air cooled models just because they don't need to use any electricity for water pump or additional fans on radiators. So I think that should get us back in shape there. This is me admitting live that I may have a problem. So start from the top again, source sheet A to Z. Really nothing has changed for Kryptonite Heavy. Let's see what's changed for Equihash. Not all that much. The uh, top five are still the same and the hybrids, they're still in the top half, but they're not in the top 20%. And then back over to Ethereum and sorting A to Z. Now, here we go. Here we got it. So we see the stacked ranking is effect, affected pretty severely, actually. So top five is now dominated by variants of the 1080 Ti. So again, if what you're after is Ethereum and long-term efficiency, and you're not too concerned about spending 200 bucks per card more, maybe consider getting a 1080 Ti hybrid edition. Uh, your mileage may vary. You may decide that's that's a purchase consideration for you. Would I do it? No. But if you know you want to increase your resale value in the face of new cards being released by NVIDIA, whether Touring is going to be the GTX 1100 series or 2000 series or, you know, uh, pink hat wearing Martian series. I don't know what they're going to call it. Uh the reality is NVIDIA is going to release new cards fairly soon. So if you want to increase the resale value of this card now, maybe consider that as one bulwark. I know it's my $5 word for the day, bulwark against, against losing too much value from these cards when it comes time to resell them in about three to six months. You can validate all of these prices by checking Amazon right now. You can get this spreadsheet by going to mine your dot biz, hovering over mine, clicking on GPU charts, and then you'll see right here, it's embedded right in that page. You can either use it from that page, or if you really feel like making it your own, just click on file, go down to make a copy, and click on make a copy. You'll have a copy of this current snapshot in your own Google Drive for you to use. Now, warning, the calculations will be off if you don't have the community numbers. If you are guys sharing is caring, be sure to add your best numbers here in the spreadsheet on the data tab. 
Guys, thank you for clicking the subscribe button. Thank you for pressing the bell icon when you're notified as new videos come out, such as my interview with an EOS developer this coming Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. You're the reason I make these videos. I love your face, and I will see you in the next one.